at a, as an active lifestyle. So that is how uh, you know our praise biopsy would require the dual correction of both contact lenses and specs. And so the success of multifocal lenses will depend on telling your patient that they exist. Because if you don't tell them, they will not know. If you tell them, they will know and they can make a choice decision whether they would like to go for a multifocal lenses or not. Now, before we start the fitting techniques or before we talk about the fitting techniques, let us first understand what were the three designs of these lenses and how do they evolve in the design. So if you see the extreme left hand side of your screen, that was the first bifocal design that was ever there. And it was called as a segmented design. Now it was called as a segment because you can see it was divided by a segmented line. So the top portion was the distance and the bottom portion was the near part. And if you see closely to that image, there was also a truncation at the bottom. So these lenses were supposed to sit on your lower lid. They were made up of RGP materials and they were not supposed to move in your eyes. So when you look up, you are seeing through the topmost segment, that is the distance zone. And when you are looking down, you are seeing through the reading segment, which is the near zone. So needless to say, this design was not very comfortable in the patient's eyes. And that is why this was discarded. And what we got was the concentric design. Now, whenever you hear this term concentric in terms of soft contact lenses, always believe that it is it is having a distance and a near it does not have an intermediate zone so they are essentially bifocals in nature but then the concentric designs was much better than the segmented design because these lenses used to move in the eyes it was it was having a proper fitting in the eye and the patient was much more comfortable with these lenses now very old you know if you if you hear about acuvue bifocals which are not there in the market anymore but they were a perfect example of having a concentric designs long back now uh, this concentric design was uh, there for quite some time but what happened was the world become digitalized so banks libraries you know many workplaces where you have to have a bookkeeping actually became digitalized so everybody started uh, you know using their desktops everybody started using a laptop and that is why if there was no intermediate into the contact lenses it was creating a lot of problem into the patient's lifestyle and that is why the final design that came into being was the one that you can see on the extreme right hand side of your screen that is called as an aspheric design so whenever you hear about this term called as aspheric design it is actually a true multifocal design where you have the distance, you have the intermediate, as well as you have the near zone. So all of these three zones are present into the patient's uh, eyes and they can see that. So the oldest design was segmented, then you got the concentric design and the latest design that you get, including those in IOL, RGPs, soft contact lenses, clearer lenses is the aspheric design, which has a distance, which has an intermediate and which has a near zone. Now, based on manufacturers, it can either be a center distance or center near in design, but you get the latest design as aspheric design for your practice. Now, how does this aspheric design actually works? It works in uh, two different ways and it is completely different from that of our glasses. So the first thing, how our specs works is it works on accommodation and convergence. And that is why our distance PD is the widest, our intermediate PD is narrow, and our reading PD is the narrowest because our multifocal glasses works on accommodation and convergence. Whereas our multifocal contact lenses works on accommodation and pupillary constriction. So it is the accommodation triad, accommodation, convergence, and pupillary constriction. So our specs works on accommodation and convergence, our contact lenses works on accommodation and pupillary constriction. So when you are seeing the uh, nearest object, you are actually accommodating the most. So your pupil become the smallest. So you see through one zone. When you are seeing through the, uh, you know, when you are seeing the intermediate, you are not supposed to accommodate that much. So your pupil is slightly larger. So you are seeing through the intermediate zone. And when you are seeing the distance, you are not supposed to accommodate. So your pupil is the largest and you are seeing through the distance zone. So it works on these three uh, you know, zones, the distance, the intermediate and the near. And it would depend on the pupillary constriction. Now, if you also see our specs, our multifocal glasses works on single vision optics. That means whenever they are seeing the distance, only one image is formed into the eye. Whenever they're reading, only one image is formed into the eye. 
and whenever they are seeing the intermediate only one image is formed into the eye so they work on single image optics but if you see you know multifocal lenses it works on simultaneous vision optics that means all the images are formed in the brain together and the brain selects which image to see now our brain is a very very powerful organ you know if you give it two or three options two or three targets it can choose any one target out of it and let me give you an example of it you can listen to me speaking right so you can you can listen to me what i'm saying and now you can also listen to this sound now your brain has two different impulses one you can you can listen to the sound and also you can listen to what i'm saying your brain is consciously what it is doing is it is focusing on my words what i'm saying to you and it is ignoring the sound at the background so now when you have these two options one of this and one what i'm speaking to you and when i merge both of them your brain still has both of you know the impulses in into it but it can pick up any one of it so now you are listening to me and you are ignoring the sound so this is the same thing that happens with the eyes so when you give two different uh, you know uh, or three or four targets to the brain the brain can pick up any one and can see that properly so that is what is called as simultaneous vision optics so your multifocal lenses works on accommodation and pupillary constriction and it also works on simultaneous vision optics and that is the reason why your multifocal lenses will take slightly longer time to get adjusted to a patient's uh, eyes compared to a multifocal glasses and that is the only reason why uh, multifocal lenses when you fit a multifocal lenses in somebody's eyes you are not supposed to take the vision immediately you are supposed to wait for a period of 20 to 25 minutes before taking the first vision of the patient and this is the reason that simultaneous vision optics is the reason why we have always found that in certain patients the image does get better with time that is uh, the reason why uh, you know we say that let the patient wear the contact lenses for one complete day before you determine the final prescription and once you have given the contact lenses to the patient ask them to come back for a follow up in four or five days and you might see that they are their vision has improved because they have been able to uh, you know they have been able to appreciate this simultaneous vision optics so this is this is how a multifocal contact lenses which is aspheric in design works in your patient's eyes now how to fit a successful multifocal lenses in your patient's eyes well it starts with taking a history so the the multifocal contact lenses will always be successful if you know how to take a proper history of the patient now this is different from the history we usually take in optometry so what we do is we ask what is the problem with your vision are you hypertensive are you diabetic do you have a family history of hypertension or diabetes those are all very good questions if you are doing a, a diagnosis as well as when you are doing a refraction but if you want to incorporate multifocal lenses in your practice you have to understand the lifestyle need of the patients because you have to know that you are dealing with patients who are 40 years old they are not impulsive buyers if they don't require the contact lenses they might not take it as well so the lifestyle needs is one of the major factor for your patient so you have to ask them about their lifestyle needs so for example i'll give you a few example of lifestyle need if somebody has a grand child right it, it might be a uh, you know granddaughter or a grandson now when the child becomes one to one and a half years old the moment the grandparent pick up the child on the lap the child is going to take the glasses and throw it away now just imagine as a grandparent since the child has taken the glasses and thrown it away you cannot see the face of your grandchildren and you cannot take them out in the park now that is uh, you know that is a trauma for a grandparent so this is the time when you can always tell them that you can wear a multifocal contact lenses spend that time with the kid and when you are not spending the time with the kid go back to your glasses so you wear your glasses all the time but when you are taking the kid out to a park or when you are playing with the kid you can always wear your contact lenses and play with the kid so that is a part of their lifestyle needs that they would require these contact lenses to play with their grandkids now you cannot play golf with a progressive glasses because you cannot take the swing if you are wearing a multifocal contact lenses you can play a golf if you are riding a car you know if you are wearing out your your glasses and you are driving so then what happens is to see all the mirrors in the car you have to actually move your head a lot 
Now, if you wear a multifocal contact lenses, your head movement is going to reduce drastically and you will be able to enjoy driving the car in a much better way. If somebody is going to an amusement park, you, you cannot go to an amusement park with the glasses and still enjoy it. You can always your, use your contact lenses, go to an amusement park, enjoy the amusement park and you know come back and go back to your glasses. If somebody wants to go to a kitty party and you know they want to uh, play cards and they don't want to reveal their age by wearing their glasses, they can always wear those contact lenses. If somebody wants to go to a marriage function and they don't want to wear their glasses, they can still wear a multifocal contact lenses. So these are just a few examples of lifestyle needs. So if you're able to understand and identify one of those lifestyle needs where your patient is going to require a multifocal contact lenses, your patient accepts the lenses much more faster. And you know your practice as a multifocal practitioner increases because you are actually providing a solution for the lifestyle need of your patient. And that is the consultative approach in optometry. So if you do that, your patient values you, your patient understands that you understand their need and you're giving them a solution and they accept the multifocal lenses in a much better way. So it starts with the history taking and after history taking, you have, uh, uh, they also understand the difference between visual acuity and functional vision. Now this is what in my focus, Right, that is what the smallest that we can see in a Snellens equity chart or in a Logmar chart is your visual equity. Functional vision is how much of that vision you use in your daily to daily life. So there is a difference. The smallest that you can see on a on a chart, on a Snellens chart or a Logmar chart, is your visual equity. But the vision that you use every day is your functional vision. So just for an example, if you if you can see the if somebody is playing with their grandkids screen you know is in in a sunny beach they will not 6 by 36 and n10 as their functional vision their visual equity can be 6 by 6 or it can be even n6 but to play in the beach they will not require probably more than 6 by 36 and n10 if somebody is speaking to their to their grandkids or if somebody is doing a facetime with the grandkids they would require n10 they will not require n6 if somebody has has a closed office cubicle then they might be requiring 6 by 24 and not N6. And you know, if you're looking into your mobile, you would require N8. And if you increase the fund size, you would require N10 and not N6. So your visual equity might be 6 by 6, but the vision that you use every day is your functional vision. And multifocal lenses is designed to satisfy your functional vision 95% of the time. That means if you go to a pharmacy and if you pick up a bottle of medicine, you can see the name of the medicine. You can see the expiry date, you can see the manufacturing date, you can see the price. So all of these things can be satisfied by a multifocal lenses. But if you want to see the ingredients of the medicine, then you might have to move into a better illumination. You might have to you know, alter your reading distance or you might have to just pop in a reading glasses to see the ingredients of the medicine. So just remember this and you have to counsel your patient accordingly that, you know, this contact lenses is should be able to satisfy your functional vision 95% of the time. So if you see to determine this functional vision, what is the vision that your patient is going to need with the contact lenses? You need to understand their lifestyle. And that is why I started with the lifestyle need, because if you know the lifestyle of the patient, you will be able to guesstimate their functional vision. And once you know the functional vision, it is easier for you to counsel the patient as well. And your patient then accepts the multifocal lenses much more faster. Now, these two things. So after you have understood their lifestyle needs and after you have, after you have done understood their functional vision or guesstimated their functional vision, you need to find out the dominant and the non-dominant eye in your patient's eyes. Now, uh, the dominant and the non-dominant eye is very easy to find out. You ask the patient to make a triangle with their hand and you alternative and you show them a target at the distance. So you first make, uh, you know, you ask your patient to make a triangle. After your patient has made a triangle with their hand, you make them wear their distance correction. You make them see, you know, six by 60 and then you alternately cover and uncover the eye. 
the eye with which they can see the image and the image does not shift is the dominant eye and the eye with which the image shifts is the non dominant eye so if you can remember d d d and n n n you will always it is easier for you to you know diagnose and treat your patient in a much better way so d d d means dikha to dominant wo dur ka trouble shooting ke liye use hoga nahi dikha to non dominant wo nazdik ka trouble shooting ke liye use hoga so d dikha d wo dominant eye hai and d wo distance ka trouble shooting ke liye use hoga n nahi dikha wo n non dominant hai and n wo nazdik ka trouble shooting ke liye use hoga so unfortunately there was a video but i think it will not play on my mobile so uh, i will not be able to show you this video over here but uh, you know it is very easy you can just go to google and check how to find out the dominant and the non dominant eye they will ask you to make a triangle with your hand they will ask you to see a distance target with the distance correction on and then cover and uncover the eyes the eye with which you can see the image is the dominant eye and the eye with which the image shifts is the non dominant eye now when you find and after you find out the dominant and the non dominant eye then it becomes very easy because it is just six steps after that it is called as r i s o n s reasons so reasons starts with refraction so you have to start with refracting your patient so the first thing you are supposed to do is do a refraction even if if you have done a refraction 6 months back and you are giving a multifocal contact lenses to your patients now you have to start with a refraction because the first trial lens that you are going to select you are going to select it on based on that refraction that you have done now and you are going to select it on the fitting guide so all the companies that provides you multifocal lenses will have their own fitting guides right so if you are fitting a cooper vision multifocal lenses you have to follow our guide if you are fitting a bosch and lom multifocal lenses you have to you know follow their guide if you are fitting a seed contact lenses you have to follow their guide now the reason i took the name of these three companies are because these three companies have daily disposable multifocal lenses in this part of asia so you can get bosch and lom multifocal lenses in daily disposable but it is in hydrogel it is known as biotrue you can get a seed uh, multi stage uh, multifocal lenses in daily disposables that is also in a hydrogel as of now and you can get cooper vision silicon hydrogel lenses by the name of clarity which is uh, you know it's a silicon hydrogel lenses so you know but all of these three lenses you can get in this part of asia and they are all daily disposable so they can be given to your patient along with their glasses now you have to choose the lenses uh, uh, based on excuse me sir yeah uh, room sir hello yes yes uh, to make a little bit inter- uh, interactive the session can we take the some of uh, uh, attendees view on their uh, perception or their uh, working experience uh, about the multifocal lenses absolutely absolutely why not So yes, anyone yes. who wants to yes. share something, so please go ahead. So anybody have yes, yes. Okay. Any questions, guys, or anything you want? You have not understood so far. You want to ask anything? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So okay, if if yes, you sir. have no questions now. still write down all or if you have uh, you know if you have any questions at the end of the session i'll still have some time with you guys so you can always ask whatever your doubt is okay so i'll tell you one thing uh, it is good that you know we have taken this break and i'll also would like to tell you something is there is no question which is actually a bad question okay there is something which is called as a bad optometrist but there is nothing which is called as a bad question if you have not understood anything or if you want to know something please ask okay if you ask there will be three things that is going to happen one is i might know the answer i will give it to you second i might not not know the answer but you know the people who are there in this session might know the answer and they might help so if they help i also come to know and you will also know third thing that might happen is none of us will know the answer so we'll all go back and study and we'll all get educated so asking questions is always good i always encourage asking questions and there might be a lot of questions which i might not know that is okay i might not know the answers of a lot of questions that is absolutely okay but still ask because if you ask and if i don't know i'll go back and study so i learn more on that right so if you if you feel asking questions please go ahead and ask uh, as well so don't shy away from asking questions 
don't think that this question is good or this question is bad this question is intelligent that question is not intelligent there is nothing like that right why uh, are we learning uh, yeah, yes yeah. sir please uh, please sir, tell me uh, what is, is sir, uh, do we have any another another technique that we can check rather than the doing the triangle uh, like if anybody have the passing suppose that if anybody have uh, don't have any one of hand or can move the one eye even he uh, he and see interested to use the peripheral uh, contact lenses sir what might yes. be the other criteria to check the domain so th- so the other one you can always try to do is find out a sensory dominance into the patient size so you make the patient sit mm-hmm. you make the patient wear the full distance correction you make the patient see 6 by 9 and then you add plus 2 diopters alternately in front of the eyes now both the eyes should be open yeah. and you make the patient see the distance with the distance correction on both the eyes are open at simultaneously and you put a plus 2 in okay. front of the eyes simultaneously the eye with which the patient says that he or she appreciates more blur is the dominant type and the eye with which the patient appreciates lesser blur is the non dominant type so this is this is can be done with 1.5 or plus 2 diopter but many studies suggest that plus 2 diopter is better and this is called as a sensory dominance test so sensory dominant test can be done with plus 2 diopter lenses both the eyes open and now we want the patient to see the 6 by 9 line and you put the lenses in front of the right eye and ask how is the blur the patient and then take it take out the lenses and put it in front of the left eye and ask how is the blur the eye with which the patient observes maximum blur is the dominant eye and the eye with which the patient observes minimum blur is the non dominant eye so our sensory dominance can be also uh, checked into the patient's eyes as well when when you are finding okay, out the uh, dominant and the non dominant eye yeah yes yes sir so uh, now yeah, is the is same thing yeah yes happening with the omlipic eye yes yes absolutely so see, the idea is yes. one of your eye will be basically see what happens is one of your eyes will be the focusing eye and the other eye will be the stereoptic eye right so we we talk about retinal points and corresponding retinal points entirely so obviously even in terms of amblyopia your focusing eye will be the better eye right and the non focus on that eye there is a non focusing eye entirely that is why it has become amblyopic or you are not using that eye at all so uh, you know okay the concept remains the same but in in when you are fitting a multifocal lenses and if, if both the eyes are okay and if there is no amblyopia into the patient's eyes uh, the patient will accept blur but one eye will be much more blur and the other eye will be lesser blur or the patient can appreciate that image shifting and not shifting in amblyopia if there is a major amblyopia they might not be able to appreciate the blur or they might not be able to appreciate the shifting of the image so that is the only thing that will differ in this case otherwise they are the same now uh, what okay, i was sir, also uh, trying to tell you was yeah please go ahead yes, tell me yes sir Uh, sir, I decided to go with the uh, passion question because if we get through the passion uh, queries, then we might uh, better connect it with the uh, audience. So, uh, let me, uh, there is a, some a few questions I will be read out for you. And can yes, we go please. through these questions, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we can. No issues. Ah, uh, so just just let me yes. finish your answer first. The other part is. Okay. if you see certain okay. companies like slr or zeiss they also have an instrumentation called as i terminals and all so if you have an access to those machines those machines are also capable of finding out the dominant and the non dominant type so in case if you have an i terminal from you know zeiss or you know from slr to take the marking of your progressive lenses those instruments also have a option of finding out the dominant and the non dominant type so you can also use those instruments to find out the dominant and the non dominant type yes sir now you can you can go ahead with the questions yes sir uh, there is a question from the uh, sabab uh, so is there any problem in the patient using the multifocal contact lens in a different light environment due to uh, pupil reaction what is the accurate uh, room light conditions to check the pupil uh that with the multifocal contact lens right so uh, that that's a very good question actually so yes it should be well illuminated if if the people uh, so the idea is you know whenever you're taking for a multifocal always do it in the room uh, illumination that is that is the best option to uh, do it and not in a dark room 
So if you're checking the people, if you're checking the people in constriction, or if you're checking how the people is reacting, is the people round reacting regular or not, do it into the room illumination. Now, when, when we talk about people, one part also is what we have to keep in mind is with, with age, the round reacting regular uh, criteria changes. So a patient of 20 year old and a patient of 40 years old and a patient of 60 year old will have a complete different round reacting and regular pupillary pattern. So uh, apart from the room temp room illumination that we are supposed to see the pupil, also see a lot of people of different ages so if you if you really want to find out if the people is round reacting or regular or not try, uh, see the people at, at see a pupil of different ages so that you are very sure that when you are fitting a multifocal you know that whether it is round regular reacting for that particular age or not so ideally room illumination is the best option to see and not a dark room uh, okay, sir. Uh, so there is another question too uh, from mm -hmm. the case of RSRA. Uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, is the isospheric multifocal uh, contact lenses utilize the accommodation and pupillary constriction? In the case mm -hmm. of a center near uh, lens, the patient might have a distance vision problem with the center near lens is better illumination. Uh, what is the solution for it? I didn't got it. Can you just repeat the question one more time, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Sir, so, uh, is, is the oispheric multiple contact lens utilize the accommodation and pupil constriction? In the case of center, yes. uh, uh, center near lenses, the patient might uh, might have the uh, might have a distance vision problem. So, with the near lenses, is a brighter illumination. So, uh, what is the solution for it? So, it's people reacting to the light. Okay. Uh, it's our more yes, sir. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, that's the right question as well. It's a fantastic question. So ideally, if you see the best yeah. designs in the world actually have a center distance in the dominant eye and a center near in the non-dominant eye. But unfortunately, in this part of Asia, we, we either get a center distance or we get a center near from one single company. So uh, if I'm not very wrong, you get seed contact lenses in center distance uh, and you get the Bosch and Lom and the Cooper Vision lenses in the center near part. And you are right, if you, if you give a center near part, you have to always give a low ad in front of the dominant eye because otherwise it can always create a problem for the distance. So ideally, the best designs in the world incorporates a center distance into the dominant eye and a center near in the non-dominant eye. So sometimes if you still find some patients who are not happy with either the center distance in both the eyes or center near in both the eyes, you can try probably you know uh, a center distance and the center near combination at least you get a center distance from C, you get a center near from Cooper, you can try that as well. But but the base design rightly said by you and rightly identified by you is a center distance into the dominant eye and a center near in the non-dominant eye. Otherwise, it can it can sometimes create halos, glares, and ghosting of images depending on the patient's pupil. It does happen like that. Yeah, uh, sir, we we have almost uh, completed the question. Uh, so I guess we can push with the presentation. Yes. So after you found out the dominant and the non-dominant eye, you can see my screen, right? Is my screen there? Visual? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So after after you have done the dominant and the non-dominant eye, you have to uh, you know follow the six steps of R I S O N S reasons. Start with the refraction, and based on your refraction. You have to choose the initial trial lenses and you have to also follow the fitting guide of that particular manufacturer. So whichever manufacturer contact lenses you are fitting, you have to follow their particular guide. But whichever manufacturer's contact lenses you have fitted into the patient size, if you are fitting the patient for the first time, give it a 15 to 20 minutes of settling time in your patient's eyes so that they can be able to appreciate that simultaneous vision optics and after 15 to 20 minutes check their vision now a good part is when you make your patient wait in your clinic for 15 to 20 minutes they would either look into their mobile or they will roam around your clinic looking into sunglasses and frames if they are doing this then you should be very happy because the multifocal lenses are working in their eyes if they're not doing any one of it, they're just sitting there with no clues and looking here and there. That means that you might need to over refract with the multifocal lenses. It might not be working in their eyes. So do follow what your patient is doing when you have asked them to wait for 15 to 20 minutes before checking your the first vision. 
and after that send the patient away with a trial so let the patient wear the lenses for one complete day before you can determine the final prescription so you have chosen the trial lenses based on your refraction and the manufacturer fitting guide you have put the lenses into the patient's eyes you have checked the vision after 20 minutes you found it to be acceptable now allow the patient to wear the lenses for one complete day before you determine which prescription to give or not now your patient after one day of lens wear asks them how was your day do not ask how was your vision that's a very difficult question for the patient to answer always ask how was your day and if the patient says oh it was fine i am happy everything was good then whatever the prescription you have given to your patient that is the final prescription but if your patient says my reading was fine i could see my mobile perfectly well can my distance be better if the patient asks you something like this then you need to do a troubleshooting and whenever you are doing a troubleshooting ensure that if it is the problem of the distance catch hold of the dominant eye remember d d d and n n n and if it is a problem of the reading catch hold of the non dominant eye now since i told that my problem is for the distance you are going to catch hold of my dominant eye and whenever you are doing a troubleshooting do not use a photopter and do not use a trial frame because whenever you are fitting a multifocal lenses in somebody's eyes it needs to be a binocular phenomenon and the moment you put a photopter or a trial frame you are breaking the patient's binocularity for the near so do not use a photopter and do not use a trial frame use hand held lenses in front of the patient's eyes now if i have said my distance is a problem you hold a plus 0.25 and a minus 0.25 in front of my dominant eye and ask which one is better if i say that minus 0.25 is better try with minus 0.5 and have a look now whenever you are doing this if i say that minus 0.25 makes the distance better with that lenses in front of the dominant eye do check my reading as well so that you are very very sure that the bit of an alteration you are going to make in the prescription will not affect my reading the same thing happens when you are doing for a near trouble shooting if you are doing a near trouble shooting you catch hold of my non dominant eye add a plus 0.25 in front of it and if i say the vision is fantastic then with that lenses in front of my non dominant eye do check the distance as well so that you know that you have actually balanced both of it properly usually 95% of the time 0.25 is more than enough and your patient will be able to appreciate the difference in vision and they will be able to appreciate the vision that they are getting but in certain cases you might need to you know alter the power more and those are the cases when the pupil or the contact lenses zone might not be you know matching with each other or your patient might not be able to understand or you know learn that simultaneous vision optics if that happens then sometimes you might even need start certain you know more powers in certain cases but majority of the time your patient will be happy with a 0.25 change now if your patient actually wants to wear contact lenses for certain occasions and do not want to wear glasses you have given them a contact lenses you have tried to troubleshoot them for two or three times and it has not happened then stop and change the brand and have a look right now for example you started let us take as with one brand you have given the patient the contact lenses you have done troubleshooting twice the patient is still not happy or the patient is you know is not satisfied with the type of vision they are getting then please try with another contact lenses another different brand or another different design if that also does not work into the patient's eyes then you can assume that probably the patient is not learning the simultaneous vision optics or the zone of the lenses is not matching with the pupillary uh, you know diameter so on those cases you can still go ahead and try a modified monovision in your patient's eyes so the modified monovision means the dominant eye gets the distance prescription and the non dominant eye gets the multifocal prescription even if that does not work then you can still go ahead and give the patient a, mo a normal monovision that means the dominant eye get the distance prescription the non dominant eye get either the intermediate or the near prescription so because it is a monovision you can only correct it for the intermediate or the near you cannot correct both of it so you need to counsel your patient accordingly that you will either be able to see your mobile uh, and if you want to see your laptop you have to hold it closer to your face or i might make your laptop clearer then you have to increase your font size in your mobile 
and you might have to hold your mobile slightly away from your face as well so you have all of these four options if you want to give a contact lenses to your patient or if your patient actually wants to wear a contact lenses so you can try with one company if that does not work try with another company if that also does not work try a modified monovision if that does not work you can still have a monovision option to correct for the patient so all of these options are there and say let us say after a troubleshooting if the patient becomes happy and satisfied you can always give them a call after 5 days and have a look how their vision is because it might become even better than what you have given them today because the brain learns to accept that simultaneous vision perception that we discussed in the beginning now this is slightly smaller probably for you guys but just have a look at it these are the top 10 multifocal fitting guides so what are the 10 steps of multifocal fitting guide or what are the 10 things you are supposed to remember to fit a multifocal lenses it is this 10 things so first and foremost you are dealing with patients who are 40 years old so please look into their tear film please look into the lids please look into the eye health and first you determine whether this patient is a suitable candidate for contact lenses or not if not don't give them the option if yes then try to understand their lifestyle need that at which part of their lifestyle this contact lenses is going to help them after you have determined their lifestyle needs then try to guesstimate their functional vision and after you have guesstimated their lifestyle need and after you have understood their functional vision then set a realistic expectation with your patient and then give the multifocal lenses to your patients so that is the first step right your patient selection is very important so you have to select the patient depending on their corneal health their lids their eyes then their lifestyle and then guesstimate the functional vision and talk to your patients accordingly and counsel them properly that you will be able to see the medicine name you will be able to see the expiry date you will be able to see the price but if you have to see the ingredients of that medicine you might have to you know uh, move into a brighter illumination you might have to alter where you are holding the medicine uh, bottle or you might have to just pop in your reading glasses to see that but 95% of the time your functional vision is going to be satisfied with the contact lenses now the second part is uh, on this part of asia like basically india and nepal and including sri lanka we do not have a multifocal toric lenses yet the world has it and the world has it for a long time but this part of asia we don't have a uh, multifocal toric lenses as of now available from any of the companies so if you have to give a finer balance between the distance and the near vision do not try to correct more than one diopter cylindrical now if your patient wants to you know use the contact lenses for any particular work then you can still go ahead and you know correct them for two or three cylinders but if your patient ideally requires a finer vision between the distance and the near do not try to correct more than one diopter cylinder so what i meant by that was i long time back i had a patient who wanted to wear this lenses for the kitty party and she had a prescription of minus 2.25 cylindrical so i asked her how are you supposed to go to the kitty party she said i will be driven by my driver so i'm very sure she is not going to require you know 6 by 6 for the distance so that's a relief okay and then i asked okay what do you want to see this for she said if i can see you know within 3 feet i am okay if i am able to see the cards i am okay if i am able to read the menu card i am okay and if i am able to see my mobile i am okay so we corrected her accordingly and she was happy with it because she did not require you know the finer details because she is driven by the driver she wants to read the cards you know identify people's face see the mobile and read the menu card so that way we were able to you know satisfy her but if your patient wants the finer details both for distance and the near do not try to attempt and correct more than one diopter cylindrical as of now and whenever you are using that spherical because we get spherical lenses use the most plus and the least minus number fourth point very important adhere to the manufacturer fitting guideline that is the most important thing and the most important point of this slide is number 5 number 5 says that please assess their vision in real life scenario that means after you have given them the contact lenses you have made them wait for 20 minutes and now you are checking their vision after you have finished with the chart the snell chart or the log mart chart please ask them to see their mobile phones if they are able to see their mobile phone please ask them to come out and see outside your clinic if they are able to see that 
okay and if the vision is acceptable over there ask them to see it in front of your desktop or laptop and see it as well so if all of these three things are okay with the patient that means the patient's functional vision is getting satisfied with the multifocal contact lenses and these lenses will be successful in the patient's eyes as well and rightly told uh, the last time also as somebody asked how where should the people be checked whether it what kind of a room illumination if you see in number five the illumination has to be a good room illumination the normal illumination that we normally use into our daily to daily life and also check the vision in real life scenario that is in your computer their mobile phone and also outside your clinic if all of these things get satisfied then you will be you know very sure you will have a peace of mind that your patient's functional vision is getting satisfied and the multifocal lenses will work in their eyes now in case if, if they are not satisfied in any one of them and you have to do a uh, troubleshooting in them then do not use a four opter or a trial frame and use handheld lenses remember normally 0.25 is more than enough to you know for the patient to appreciate the good vision now if you are doing a troubleshooting for the distance with that same lenses do check the near and if you are correcting them for the near with that same lenses do check the distance as well so that you are sure that altering the prescription is not altering their vision in in these two zones and start with the lowest ad possible so that you can satisfy your patient for a longer duration of time and if your patient is happy with the visual acuity so that means that if your patient is happy with the functional vision we then do not try to correct uh, six by six if your patient is happy with the functional vision they don't, don't have a problem with the contrast sensitivity and they're happy go ahead and dispense the lenses to them and remember that you know a few of the times the vision will become better after a few days so these are the top 10 multifocal fitting guides that you should always remember now after this do remember that with age your patient's pupil is becoming smaller it will not become large right as your patient grows old the pupil will become small and this is the time when you should always remember that you are supposed to give them if the pupil is round reacting and regular the dominant eye should get a low add in case of a center near design because if you give a high ad the pupil might become small and your addition zone will increase so the patient will find it difficult you know to suppress the bigger zone and they will always complain of ghost ghosting of images halos and glares so the dominant eye try with a low ad the first trial lenses should be with a low ad and the non-dominant eye you can go ahead and give a high ad if the people are dilated if they do not constrict then you can straight away go and give a high ad and if the people are you know constricted then also the dominant eye should get a low ad when you are doing a center near design now in alternatively you can also try a center distance in uh, in the dominant eye and the center near in the non-dominant eye but you have to remember you will not get it from the same company so you're going to give two different materials into the patient's eyes so you have to take the adaptation time from the patient because you're putting two different materials into the patient's eyes and you're giving a center distance from one company and the center near from the other company but if you're giving a center near uh, lenses to your patients uh, ensure that you always do a low add in the dominant eye the first trial lenses should be a low add into the dominant eye so do keep that in mind as well now uh, what you get from cooper view part of asia is you know, you know the lenses that on a multifocals you get a lenses which is called as clarity so it's a daily disposable silicogel lenses uh, multifocal lenses so the advantage of giving a silicon hydrogel lenses is that the amount of oxygen it is going to pass into the eye will be proper because we're looking for a decay by t of 35 across the power range and throughout the day so if that is taken care of the patient's eyes will be much more healthier and we're also looking for our lenses whose perforation rate is very less and silicons normally will have a better uh, you know water retention capability compared to a hydrogel lenses so that way it will be better and it has one of the lowest modulus of 0.5 it has one of the lowest contact angle of you know almost around 22 degree so even if your patient has lesser tears this lens will still work in their eyes now the other two lenses we have are not multifocals they are spheres and torics but just for your information since this is the first session with you guys we have a biofinity which is available from plus 15 to minus 20 in a silicon hydrogel lenses and we have biofinity toric which is available from uh, plus minus 10 diopter minus 5 
5.75 cylinder at 5 degree steps so you can get it at 5 10 15 25 all of these steps and you get a multifocal lenses in monthly disposable category as well which is less clarity monthlies and clarity one day so we are probably one of the companies in this part of asia who has uh, silicon hydrogel multifocal lenses but they are center near in design and uh, you know you have to check all of the things that we discussed now to fit these lenses in your patient's eyes and this one topic which i thought was very very important to discuss now because we all are going through this and i don't know what information you guys have but i have a few information from uh, various credible sources into the world and i thought of just discussing this with you before we take all the questions on multifocals and this is important even for your multifocal patients as well and that is why i thought of taking this up is you know there are many controversies where the specs are good or contact lenses are good so you know the credible journals including american optometric association or including you know iacl in co including core all of these associations says that you can wear both of these you know vision correcting uh, methods so you can wear contact lenses but if you are wearing contact lenses you have to follow the hand hygiene properly you are supposed to disinfect your contact lenses properly you are supposed to clean in your cases properly you have to use your solutions in a much better manner and if there is any flu like symptom in the body you are not supposed to use contact lenses for during that time so these are the four options for contact lenses the first thing is wash your hands that normally your patient do disinfect the contact lenses that normally your patient does you know clean the keep the cases clean that normally your patient does so one of the important thing you need to tell your patient is that in case if you're having any flu like symptom do not wear your contact lenses during that time now coming to specs here the things become slightly more tricky because you have to be much more uh dominant to your patient to give this option to your patient because your specs wearers are not habitual cleaners they do not clean their glasses very often but this covid 19 virus can stay on metals on plastics for almost days together so the minimum amount of day they can survive is three days so whenever they're wearing specs and they are going out to buy any essential supply or if any essential supply is coming in the house they need to clean their specs with soap at least for 20 seconds and disinfect their specs as well now this is more important for your presbyopic wearers because they are much more vulnerable to get this covid 19 compared to those who are lesser than 40. so if you see when this covid started even in wuhan uh, 67 percent of the patients were more than 40 years of age so this is a very very uh, you know critical age and these are the patients particularly those who wears a reading glasses or those who wears a multifocal glasses please tell them to clean the glasses and disinfect the glasses the other part which you also need to be very careful about is the mobile phones because the virus can stay on the mobile phone screen for as long as seven days so if you are going out to buy any essential supplies and if your grocery list is on the mobile please ensure that your patients disinfect the mobile as well either with alcohol wipes that you normally get in opticals or they might even use a hand sanitizer to clean it but please clean the mobile phones as well now if you want i can share all of uh, the articles with you guys i can share it with uh, mr sridhar or mr kapil and they can share it with you so or you can just visit Cooper Vision India page and there is a page called as COVID-19. You have all the credible journals over there as well. So you have American Opti American Optometric Association, you have Code, you have BCLA, all there uh, on on that website. So I can share that link with uh, with you guys. But do remember to give this instruction to your patients as much as possible because this is a serious thing. If we are more than 40, this is there is going to be a problem. The other thing, since we discussed COVID-19, I would also like to tell you guys is this is not going to get over, right? So as optometrist, as healthcare practitioner, we should know that COVID will stay and it is going to haunt us for at least a year now till the time we have a vaccination. So ensure that as practitioners, as, as uh, you know, primary healthcare practitioner, get your immunity up, do a lot of exercises, 
have a healthy lifestyle so that at least you are immune because if your immunity is up this virus will not affect you much so get, get your immunity up as much as possible live a healthy lifestyle as much as possible and remember that this is not going to be over after the lockdown the virus is still going to be there flattening the curve means not killing the viruses flattening the curve means getting lesser infection within a given period of time so infections will happen so please take proper precautions and during this lockdown time when you are at home when you are studying when you are understanding optometry in a better way also exercise and also have a proper diet so that you can raise your immunity as well so do remember nothing is going to change till the time we get a vaccine and vaccine is at least 12 to 16 months away as per all the research that i have came across so do build your immunity ask your patient to build their immunity as well as much as possible right and uh, the last uh, slide of the session is always remember that contact lenses and specs will together satisfy all of the visual needs for your patients if you have any questions you have my email id on the top uh, you can write to me you can even you know have my number you can give me a call as well at any given point of time but normally 99 percent of the time i don't answer my mobile so you can always give me a, pay, a, a message on messenger or you can even drop me a whatsapp as well so just for your information my number is 9130095172 so that's my number 9130095172 so drop in a whatsapp message anytime you feel like or anything you have to ask you can still go to this website that is there in the screen to learn more about multifocal lenses and now i can take any question and answer if you guys have to ask so hello sir please go ahead and ask yes sir hello. Yeah, yeah, tell me, sir. Uh, it's my business. Actually, Kapil's uh, line got disconnected, so I'll be heading over for for the queries. So there yeah, are yeah, please, few please. questions. Uh, uh, one question from uh, Sant no uh, Santoshi Chaudhary. Can multifocal contact lenses right. make us feel dizzy or how can we overcome this? Yes, so sir? multifocal lenses, absolutely, that's a good question. Uh, multifocal okay. lenses can make you, can you, can you listen to me? Am I yes, audible? Sir, yes. yes, sir, yes. Yeah, so one part yes, of, so can. one part of it is you have to remember is that yes, multifocal lenses can make you feel dizzy in the initial phases. So if you're wearing multifocal lenses for the very first time and your patient's brain is not getting adjusted to that simultaneous vision optics you your patient will always feel a bit of a dizzy your patient might also feel a bit of a dizzy if you if the zones are not matching and if the patient has been overcorrected. so that is the also a time when your patient feels dizzy so there are two ways of doing it first if you feel that your patient is because of they're not able to have got adjusted to that simultaneous vision optics please ask them to get adjusted to the contact lenses slowly and steadily to the contact lenses for four hours the first day then means ask them to add content the next day so that is one part you can tell your patients always and the second part is if you feel that if your patient is you know feeling dizzy because of the refractive error then you can always add plus 0.25 to the distance prescription if you are doing that you are making the patient slightly more myopic in nature if you make the patient slightly myopic in nature the chances of asthenopic symptoms will not be there into the patient's eyes so that is also something you can look for when you are you know if your patient is feeling dizzy so one is give them a bit of an adaptation time to get adjusted to the lenses you know schedule the lens where accordingly probably four six eight hours for the first three days and then wear the lenses completely if you feel it is because of the refractive error try to make the patient slightly myopic in nature so that the asthenopic symptoms does not come so these are the two things you can always try uh, okay sir sir in aspiric contact lenses there are one one question from my side only uh, in aspiric yeah, contact lenses multiple zones like for center distance center near uh, many alternating zones are there sir so mm -hmm. uh, what is ideal center zone diameter uh, does it vary based on design whether it is center, center near it, it 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 varies basically based on you know your uh, so normally if you say normally the data is very proprietary so none of the companies come out with the data so i have just one data so i, I have read almost 
uh, you know around 13 or 14 literatures and i have just came across one data which says that the if it is a low addition the zone is at around 1.7 mm and if it is a high addition the zone is around 2.3 mm now this does change with the power this does change with the refractive error at the distance but the only data that i have came across ever in my life is the low zone has a 1.7 mm of zone and the high has a 2.3 mm of zone but it it is supposed to change based on your uh, you know your distance prescription as well uh, okay sir uh, one more question from ajay kumar ray <clears throat> by yes. giving one eye as the distance and another eye as center near do we have any stereopsis problem if yes then how can we overcome with this okay so yes obviously we'll have a stereopsis problem for sure because one eye is looking for the distance and the other eye is looking for the near so stereopsis if you measure stereopsis there will be a problem but if you are not measuring stereopsis your patient will use the monocular clues to see everything properly now one part which is very important over here is if you are giving somebody you know a, a monovision a modified monovision you have to also understand their functional vision and their lifestyle need why are they going to require it if they want to have a very fine distance and near you might not be able to give them this but if they want it for their regular lifestyle they can always make out the distance between two objects based on the monocular clues which means based on the shape size texture color of the object they can find out which object is closer and which object is farther so they can manage that but if you are measuring stereopsis okay hello great or it might not be even there because you are correcting one eye. you will always find that the stereopsis will not be that high for the distance and the other eye is having the near correct option so the patient will manage because of the monocular clues that they are going to get Okay. So your patient might not so, complain. Uh, okay. Uh, one question from uh, Sada Balav. I, I hope uh, uh, it's getting clear for everyone who have asked question. Please uh, stay on the line, and uh, as your queries will be addressed uh, by sir. Uh, now one more question from Sada Balav. Ahmad, if we yes, yeah, so as long as your question. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. You saying something? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Ah, uh, Sadam Sadav Ahmed has one question. If we use compensated spherical power in astigmatic patient. Can it be a reason uh, of less adapting to the multifocal contact lens mm -hmm. by the uh, by the patient, or uh, because they don't give get the clarity of reason what they? I, I didn't got it. Can I just repeat the question? No, can I just? Yeah. Okay, sir. He's telling like if we use a spherical power, compensated spherical power in astigmatic patient, can it be a reason of less adapting to the multifocal contact lens? Yeah. Uh, because they don't uh, get the clarity yes, of vision. Yes, absolutely. They... So that is why so I said that you are not supposed to. Yes, right. So again, I'll go back to the same thing that I told before. Is that do not try and correct more than one diopter cylinder if you want to. You know, if your patient wants a finer vision, but if you if you realize that your patient's functional vision. is not that so they don't require finer details for their functional vision like playing you know uh, cards in a kitty party you can still go ahead and dispense but if you think that you know your patient would require a balanced vision between the distance and the near please do not try and correct more than one diopter cylindrical and that is absolutely right that if if you give more than one diopter cylindrical the patient might not get adjusted if they require finer functional visions okay uh one more question from rahul a presbyopic patient has problem in near vision so how a patient will comp complete cleaning and insertion step can you hear me sir? yes so the first and foremost thing is when that yeah yeah i can 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 you hear me as well yeah yeah sir yeah am i audible Yes, sir. Yes. 
hello can you, you can me? proceed yeah. sir yes yeah so that that is right so when you are, so first and foremost when the patient yeah when the patient is cleaning the glasses when the patient is cleaning the contact lenses they are supposed to wear their glasses when they are cleaning it right so they are wearing their reading glasses when they are cleaning the lenses sir. when they pick up the lenses in their finger okay. they are still wearing their glasses their reading glasses or their you know their progressive glasses okay. and then during the insertion and the removal they might use a magnifying mirror so they can see things enlarged and they can easily insert and remove the contact lenses from their eyes so during cleaning they are using their multifocal glasses during picking up the lenses from the case they are using their multifocal uh, glasses and when they are inserting the lenses into their eyes they can use a magnifying mirror so that they can see really big and they know where they are putting their eyes when they where they are putting their lenses in their eyes but they will require this only for the initial few days because once they get adjusted to it it you know, they, it just goes in so there there is no need to even look into the mirror after a few days but for the initial few days they have to use their uh, multifocal glasses for the cleaning and picking up the contact lenses and during insertion they would require a magnifying glasses for better handling of the contact lenses okay. uh with that now a question from amit saying what is the distribution of contrast sensitivity in multifocal contact is it 30% yes, so sorry can i just repeat the question one more time what is the distribution of contrast sensitivity in different zones of multifocal contact the 30% uh, in each zone or might, might not be so actually what happens is there is there is no data at all about this so you know i have not came across any literature that that says that you know it will be distributed exactly 33% throughout the zones but i guess it will okay. depend on you know your different additions and probably probably the distant zone will have a more higher contrast sensitivity compared to that of the near but there is there is no study which has proved anything about this the only study that is there is regarding patient's contrast sensitivity and we have found that with multifocal lenses the contrast sensitivity is okay for all the three zones but i guess if it if there has to be a distribution of contrast sensitivity it has to be you know slightly more for the distance than for the reading yeah okay so one question santosh chaudhary is asking like uh, in any condition can present where okay hello Yeah, can uh, can yes, I just sir? repeat the question? Is that audible, sir? Now? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have I, a lot of problem with the connection. I have to go to Kapil. Uh, you, you, the, you, you, you're back. Yeah, Kapil, sir, you can take over. Hello? Yes, yeah, so one question is there. Uh, can patient wearing uh, reading uh, wear reading glasses with multifocal contact lenses in any case in any scenario? Yes, 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 they can, they can. So in case if if they're reading, if they're reading smaller prints like you know uh, medicine ingredients and contents, they can still wear multifocal. Uh, they can wear multifocal contact lenses and just wear a reading glasses on the top. They can do that at certain instances. Okay. so uh, you yeah, have many many queries like uh, uh, so i can i can see the queries now let me try and answer all of them okay <laughs> so i can see that now i have found out where to see those so the other yes. question is what i understood is uh, uh, what is the best multifocal contact lenses for astigmatism toric or any other right that is the next question and uh, what what i would like to tell you is unfortunately in india we don't have a multifocal toric lenses as of now probably you know if you get a multifocal toric lenses all companies make them so you you can get it in center near or center distance or you can get it in center distance and center near combination as well but as of now they are not available over here so that is the only problem that we have otherwise all companies makes it and all of them are good quite good enough so then uh, there is okay. a question from mr ajay kumar who asks uh, how to determine the wait, uh, wait 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 i just lost him oh. 
okay so he asks why is how is how to find out the reading zone i guess uh, how we determine the near at power the near at power as of now entirely depends on uh, your spectacle power so depending on the spectacle power you determine whether to give a low add or a high add all the manufacturing uh, fitting uh, the manufacturer's fitting guide on contact lenses will have this uh, add power given according to the prescription the spectacle prescription or the glass prescription of the patient so you can always find out the add power from there as per trials is concerned yes we can provide you some trials for sure this is this question is from uh, mr virendra yes sir we can provide you a bit of a trials do get in touch with okay. me and i can send you some trials as well what percent of vision then there is a question from mr ananta what percentage of vision is compromised with multifocal contact lenses and what is the minimum vision required for those contact lenses vision compromise will depend on uh, your patient's pupillary constriction and and this vision uh, compromise will depend on the patient's ability to understand the simultaneous vision optics but you can take it as normally in majority of the cases what we have seen the patient is will be able to happily read 6 by 6 parts for the distance and they will happily be able to read n8 for the near so not much of a change uh in that so not much of a vision compromise but yes you will be compromising probably one line for the distance and one line for the near that is what the compromises can be so one question is from mr rahul who says what is the main reason of prescribing add power in contact lenses in terms of low mid and high but not giving exact add power very true so this basically if you see uh, rahul sir rightly asked if you have a center distance and a center near design in multifocal it comes with exact add powers but if it is a center near design like the multifocal lenses we have as of now or basically if you have uh, multifocal designs which are you know which does not have that center distance in one eye and center distance in the other eye it is basically termed as low mid and high based on the strength of the zone because it's a center near so the zone size and the power determines the low high and the mid because we don't have a fixed addition into this lenses because we are completely depending on the pupillary constriction and these are at the center of the eye so low high and mid depends on the zone size as well as the strength of the zone if you are fitting a center distance and the center near multifocal so if for example let us take as uh, biofinity is a multifocal lenses in the world biofinity multifocal which has a center distance and a center near design so the dominant eye gets the center distance and the non dominant eye gets the center near on those multifocals you will have addition mentioned plus 2 plus 1.5 plus 1.75 but if it is only a center near design you will get it in high low and mid because it is to specify the zone that low addition will have a smaller zone uh, the mid addition will have a slightly bigger zone and the high addition will have the biggest zone and it also determines the strength of the lenses that is why we have it in this three powers so in a single vision contact lenses thickness is given in minus 3 uh, respectively in multiple contact lenses thickness is given on which basis it is normally given at minus 3 only uh, that that was the question by mr sadab it was it is still minus 3 we give the thickness at minus 3 only even for multifocal contact lenses but honestly if you ask me do not worry about the central thickness because they are almost similar in majority of the cases and center thickness will not create an issue the issue will be by the modulus of the lenses so please try to find out the modulus of the lenses and please try to find out the contact angle of the lenses the modulus and the contact angle will determine your patient's happiness with the lenses in their eyes so try to find that out and if you are trying to find out the decay by t because of the center thickness try to find out oxygen maps so there are few of the oxygen maps that are available see it over there that is more important rather than the central thickness so focus on uh, the modulus the contact angle and the oxygen map that is going to give you a much more realistic uh, expectation set compared to the thickness so uh, there is a no yeah okay yes sir i'm back no there is two more questions i guess oh yes sir i'll be uh, okay uh, may i assist you sir uh, yeah, you... no i think this is the last two left so one is by mr 
uh, one one is by Anju, uh, I think Anju, ma'am, right? Yeah. So she, uh, she asked. So I guess multifocal contact lenses is not suitable for pharmacists. Might not. So uh, you know, I have seen a few pharmacists who gets happy with multifocal lenses. But if you if it is a laboratory guy or you know if if they have to use both the visions properly into a microscope, uh, probably a biochemist might not be that happy with the multifocal lenses at all. So yes, it is professional dependent and it depends on the individual need as well. Absolutely right over there. And uh, one more question Rob, from Mr. Sadab is: Is there any problem when using night mode on digital screen using multifocal contact lenses? Yes, it depends on how far or how close the digital screen is. Uh, normally, if it is for your, uh, you know, normally if it is an airplane, you are sitting in an international flight and seeing the screen, it will not affect. If it is at an elbow's length, so your reading screen, if it is far away at an elbow's length, nothing is going to happen. You are going to be comfortable with it. But if you are holding the screen too close to your eyes, it is going to give a problem. If you give high ad in both the eyes, so you have to start with a low ad in the dominant eye and a high ad in the non-dominant eye, so that the, the digital screen viewing at night does not affect your patient. So I think I finished all, <laughs> all the questions. I don't know how much they've understood, but I have finished all the questions. <laughs> it was, uh, I guess, we have joined a lot and, uh, you know, we are both, uh, so much thankful for you, sir. And okay, so uh, I guess uh, we have answered many, uh, many of the questions, right, sir? Yeah, I, I have answered all of them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all of so the much. questions that were there. Okay, uh, if any, then you have the question, uh, uh, still, I try uh, to. Do you want to ask? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sir. <laughs> at at least. I don't see you can also phone. WhatsApp me. I am sharing my number with everyone, right? So that is my phone number. Please WhatsApp me. I will definitely answer you as well. So, so on the chat section, I have shared my uh, mobile number as well. So normally I don't answer the mobile, but if you WhatsApp me, I will definitely revert back to you for sure. Okay. So guess, uh, one so more thing is, uh, uh, you know, honestly, Yes, sir. Uh, so thank you guys for this opportunity. Believe me, yes, uh, probably you know it is it is my long term dream to come to Nepal, and and probably I'll I'll do that one day as well. So you know, and once I do, I'll I'll probably try and meet all of you guys as well at some time. Uh, we are we are happy to see you, sir, in Nepal. So uh, <laughs> okay, uh, here I announce the closure of this session and. Before the ending uh, today's session, I would like to organize a sincere gratitude to our presenter, Mr. Rupam sir, and all the attendees. And also, I'd like to appreciate all the help, helping hands for the ITEX program. Here with I ending the today's session, requesting all uh, for you to drop your review and feedback. I just uh, put the file on our group box, so we please go through this file and stay safe. Keep in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay.